Hey, I just wanted to take you guys through the destruction system I uh, built for Unity. Um, you know, there's a lot of learnings and how to keep uh, destruction cheap and affordable so that uh, it could run at 90 frames a second in VR. So, and a lot of the destruction system is how um, the code is designed to work with the art and how the code is designed to manipulate the art. Um, and, and so, which is why I wanted to take you through this. Um, one thing you'll see, just to, so you know it's not a bug, you'll see these big black hole looking things. It's actually dots from a sign distance field shader. So long term, I'll just make a tile, you see it's like little polka dots. Um, the idea there is it's gonna, what it's gonna do is allow artists to paint ink on, on, onto the ships. Almost like if you think about Tales of the Borderlands or something like that, that really like a comic booky look. So it's not a bug, which is why I call it out. Um, any case, uh, to take you guys through the destruction system, before I do that, I'm just going to cut to a quick video, uh, sort of showing you the destruction system in action. So in any case, um, the destruction system is made up of a couple parts. First off is uh, the destructible ship. Uh, destructible ship, you know, it could be a, any entity, in this case it's a ship, it has a little bit of custom logic and how ships specifically uh, blow up in terms of, you know, what that looks like. Uh, made up of a couple parts, the main model and then a bunch of destructible meshes. Now what this was done for, this, this design is basically to keep the set pass calls really low. One of the th problems Unity has, um, it, you know, it's not really super good at batching. Um, uh, every object um, is uh, basically one draw call for the mesh, and then it's got to render the depth buffer, and then you're talking another uh, pass for the shadows, and then if you have shadow cascades, that's additional passes, and that's for every object. Um, and because uh, Unity dispatches passes to the GPU on the main thread, um, and not like a, a secondary or you know thread. Um, it really is, you know, you'll become CPU bound really quick, especially in VR, if you're not really keeping those set pass calls really low. So uh, the main model here, the reason this was designed this way is basically it's the whole thing uh, put together into a singular mesh. And uh, what that does is when the ship is undamaged, the rest of this is all completely hidden. Um, and then, you know, there can be in preferences, the idea is that you can set like, hey, how many ships are we going to allow to to show damage at any one time to keep that, you know, performance, to keep everything running really nice. Um, and then, of course, if there's a boss or something and it was important to gameplay that you really need to see the damage on a particular ship, you know, we could prioritize that. But uh, that's the concept here, so is that, so when like 10 ships are flying around and none of them are damaged, you know, it, it doesn't take all these additional set pass calls that you would get otherwise. Um, so basically what happens is the destructible ship here will hide the main model the second that the, the ship starts getting damaged. So that'll just go away. Um, and they'll start unhiding this stuff. Now, some of these things are hidden on startup. Some of these internals are sticking out, but uh, I'll get into that. So basically, um, next, you know, I showed you guys, there's the main model and then there's these destructible meshes. So if I click one of these destructible meshes, what this is, is basically, uh, it does a couple things. Um, first off, it's, when it gets when it reaches a certain damage threshold, and that's defined basically, there's a hitbox um, as a child of every destructible mesh or destructible effects object, and uh, this hitbox will tell its parent, "Hey, I've reached this damage threshold, so you should become you should start showing damage." When it does that, um, we swap into material, and it's defined right here. Now we want to use uh, dot shared material, and the reason we don't just like change this material and we actually swap a material is it keeps it instanced again to keep the draw calls down. If we changed this material here, um, it, or I should say, if we change this material, it would become instanced, 
and then it basically couldn't batch anymore. Where if I just assign a material as a shared material, um, it's just the same material used again. So it would basically apply that there. What that is, is a cutout shader with back face calling turned off. And that lets you see like the back of polygons and all that. The other thing it would do, um, the destructible effects here, knows what to unhide. So um, in this case, it's um, got this here. I'm gonna pull this up. There's some duplication I'll get into later. You'll say, hey, there's another whole wing. Again, that's gonna be for set pass calls and I'll show you why that was done. So um, the destructible effects here though, basically when it's, you know, it's gonna swap in the material when it takes enough damage and then it's gonna um, unhide uh, this thing here, you know. So you, then you get to see some of the cool internals of the ship. You really feel like you're starting to like, you know, blow holes in it. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Um, there's some special case stuff. Um, there's a wing tip here. So like the sail. Uh, the sail works a little bit differently. It's pretty similar. It's, you know, so destructible effect. Um, but one of its hitboxes is, is a hitbox that inherits from a normal hitbox is called a sail end. And all that hitbox knows is, hey, when my parent gets damaged, when it's going to get damaged, let's hide. Let's disable myself. So this hitbox becomes disabled. And the reason that is, is uh, when a sail gets uh, damaged, it basically hides itself, it hides its sail part, and you see that like it gets blown off. And we don't want that hitbox there, you know, allowing you to shoot something that isn't actually there. Um, the destructible effects also will sp has the ability to spawn in uh, rigid bodies. So the rigid bodies it spawns in, um, you know, it's just a prefab, uh, but I'll just use this one here, actually, it's there. Um, and spawn in something like this is for a different sale. Um, so, so basically all this is, is it's a destructible rigid body. This would be uh, spawn in a startup, actually. Um, the, the system would position it and unhide it, and that's just, you know, because you don't want to create objects at runtime in Unity. Um, and this has a force position. That's like where the explosive force happens. Um, relative to, you know, you don't want it necessarily to happen from origin to center point. You want it to happen from like under it or whatever to create a really cool effect. And then you have these different pieces and those are just individual rigid bodies that, boom, you know, fall and they make it look like you actually really blew the end of that sail off. So that's, that's you know, one special case destructible effects. It's still built within the same system, but, you know, works a little differently. Uh, so then... The other part is we have these things called breakable parts. And what a breakable part is, is when the ship really dies, right? Uh, what we wanted to do is have it really blow apart. We didn't just want it to like, oh, you know, start falling. We wanted to have chunks blow off and we wanted it to be different every time. So, that, you know, it was a bit random. So uh, we have this thing called destructible breakable part. And that's actually why there's two wings. Um, I didn't want to have like, uh, all the little breakable parts that could fall off just appear when the wing was damaged. Because that's, again, it's more set pass calls. You have to have all these little individual objects. That's really, that would be really sad. So uh, what it does is it unhides the wing when the wing, you know, gets to a certain damage point here. And then when I'm right at its death point, right when it's really going to die, um, then it's okay. We hide, you know, this will hide. Um, and the destructible breakable part will unhide its... Um, other pieces um, and then you know randomly uh, break itself off when it breaks itself off what it's actually doing is just creating an empty rigid body again those can be spawned right at startup and just sort of moved around and stuff but there's these um, destructible rigid body empty things uh, it's basically creating that at wherever you know the object is and then just reparenting itself to this new rigid body and applying a force so that it can you know spin away and then, you know, the, the breakable parts can say, hey, I want like X amount of my children to break when I break and have them break off from me. And I want that to have a random chance. And those are all like tunable parameters. And, you know, it really keeps it feeling like every time I kill a ship, it's just gonna be a little bit different. You never really know what's gonna happen. So, you know, that's a destructible system in a nutshell, sort of the things you have to think about when building it to keep uh, everything performing really well in VR.